Okay, hello YouTube. Um, I'm gonna ask answer a question that I get asked sometimes. Uh, what is the worst first move in chess? So if you like this kind of content and you want to see more content like this, um, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and uh, turn on your notifications. So what is the worst first move in chess? So for starters, we have to understand what are some of the best first moves in chess, right? So Obviously, the the four main best moves in chess, the best first moves in chess generally, are moves that attack the center immediately with pawns. Like, say, uh, e4, d4, c4 attack the center immediately with pawns. And also, knight f3 immediately takes control of central square and can be followed up with, you know, d4 or e4 or c4. So these four moves, respectively, are the four best moves in chess, first moves in chess, and they get played a ton um and also they score really well they're all scoring well above 50 percent e4 is scoring about 54 percent and then d4 knight f3 and c4 are all scoring right around 55 percent so they're all doing really good for white white's winning um his more than his fair share of games white's just doing a little bit better than black is you know white's you know winning 55 percent of the games black's winning 45 percent of the games it's actually a 10 point spread so white's doing pretty good with these four openings. So if you want to play one of the best four openings in chess, it should be one of these four. Um, we have lots of games to show this. So what about some openings that come close that also have a large number of games? Well, you've got your two immediate Fianchetto openings. You've got your G3 and B3. Um, you've got G3 and you've got B3, the Larson's opening. And these actually are pretty respectable. Um, G3 is right up there with these other four. Um, actually, G3 is scoring about the same. It's scoring right around 55% with G3. A lot of this is because it transposes into these other systems. So you can play a King's Indian attack with Knight F3, Bishop G2, D3. And basically, you're not even losing a tempo on most of the systems that you would be playing with, say, one Knight F3. So that's why Bishop G2 is, is kind of in the same category. It's scoring about the same as these other direct central attacking approaches because you're not even losing a tempo on these direct approaches. So B3 is kind of surprised, kind of surprised me a little bit. Um, B3 is right up there with all the other ones. Uh, B3 is scoring right around 52%. So it's right up there. It's, it's scoring about the same as E4, D4, uh, Knight F3, and C4. Uh, it's a solid move. It puts the bishop on the long diagonal, and you can use it as part of a consistent setup. So there's a lot of reasons that b3 is doing really well. Also, there's the specialist factor. And this is something that I've run into a lot with a lot of weird moves. You would think that some of these weird moves <clears throat> that look really disturbing should be scoring really horribly for white. But some of them score really well because if somebody plays a strange move, on the first move, like a really strange move, there's a specialist factor where they are possibly specializing in this continuation and that's bumping up their statistics a little bit higher. So it's not terribly surprising that b3 is doing really well or even as well as e4, d4, knight of 3, c4 because there is this specialist factor. Not everybody's going to be prepared uh, for b3 with black. Not everybody's going to put a lot of time and effort for preparing with uh, against b3. But the person that plays b3 is going to be very well prepared in all of his lines and all of his variations and all of his preparations. So there is that specialist factor that's helping out B3 compete with these other really big moves. So those are some of um, the best moves in chess. Now that's discounting statistical outliers. There are a couple of statistical outliers, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that I'm not gonna count them even though they're, they got really high winning percentages because there's too few games to count them. And of course, one of them is one of my favorite openings. The Cadis opening actually has one of the highest winning percentages. Um, 1H4 is scoring about 61%. And of course, there's a huge specialist factor here because if somebody does play the Cadis, if they play 1H4, they're, they're going to be specialized in that opening. But I would say that this is actually so rare that um, it's it's uh, we can't be positive that 61% would hold if this got played any more than it got played. It's I mean, this is this is an opening that gets played that's gotten played maybe less than two dozen times in serious competitions. So, it's it's not something that 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 we can say yes, this is definitely sixty one percent because another opening that fits into that category is Knight H three, again, which has been played on on like the master level like less than a half dozen times, but it's also done surprisingly well. Um, it's scored about you know sixty three sixty four percent.
Okay, so now we're going to get into the, um, the, the terrible first moves. What are the terrible first moves? What are the awful first moves that do really, really badly? Well, one move that does really badly, and it kind of shocked me at how bad it does, um, it's scoring about 39% for white, and we do have actually a lot of games in this line that would tell me that this is a reasonable statistic that we can expect this move to score very poorly, and that move is h3. And this really surprises me. I mean, it doesn't surprise me so much because it's a really useless move. I mean, unlike h4, which actually does something because it's staking out a little bit of territory in our extended center, and it's also um, preparing to transpose into lines where we can make h3, I mean, h4 useful, things like the King's Indian attack, things like the Gurganit's variation. When I look at h3, I can't think of anything where h3 would be like a super useful move that we can transpose into after black has taken over the center. So it does make sense from a positional perspective, but I'm surprised that it didn't get any bump from the specialist factor. You know, somebody playing h3 and specializing in that system and understanding the transpositions, it's not getting any bump from that. And the only thing I can think of is there's just not enough reasonable transpositions to make this one wasted move worthwhile. But that's the other thing that kind of shocked me. It is just one wasted move. Basically, white is playing black now. White statistics should mirror normal statistics for black, but they don't. And that kind of shocked me as well, is, is white is scoring significantly less than what black scores normally, which is about 45%. And white's doing much worse than that with H3. So H3 is pretty bad. And so that's not surprising that H3 is in that category. Another, another one that's not surprising that's doing really poorly is F3. And again, not benefiting at all from any kind of specialist factor here. F3 is scoring pretty badly. It's scoring right around 38%. And it doesn't shock me that it's scoring that bad. I mean, it's a weakening move. And again, unlike the birds, which is also a weakening move, the birds is etching out territory in the center of the board. Kind of, again, my objection between H3 and H4. At least H4 is etching out some territory, whereas F3 is etching out no territory versus F4, which is etching out some territory. So it's not too surprising that just making a weakening pawn move on the first move and not doing anything at all to um, take territory in the middle of the board is going to hurt you, right? And that there's apparently no good way, no specialist factor to make this work in some kind of weird transposition. Nothing seems to be helping people. People are scoring pretty bad. But none of this compares apparently to the worst first move in chess on a statistical level. And this would really shock me. Even counting statistical outliers, you know, openings that only have one or two or three games where people have played, even discounting, even, even counting those, even counting statistical outliers, statistically, the worst first move in chess coming in at 37% with the white pieces, apparently no specialist factor is kicking in here. And that really shocked me because I know people specialize in this opening. I know people study this opening to death. I know there's people that love this opening. I know that there's masters that have played this opening that have sworn by it and love it. So this really shocked me. And that opening is the Grobs, G4. How in the world is this the worst first move in chess? And the answer is really simple, is everybody is, once you play G4, there's actually no surprise value at all. You would think, it's a surprise, I didn't see G4 coming. Yeah, but your opponent does know at this point that you're likely a specialist because the only people that play this crazy weakening move on their king side to fianchetto their bishop are going to be specialists. They're going to be people that are specialists. So people are paranoid about it as black. Like the vast majority of people that face the grob are super paranoid about playing against the grobs. So they immediately plant their pawns on these light squares. They play d5 and c5, and they're not tempted into taking this pawn because they don't want to walk into anything that the specialist has prepared. So it's almost universally, like at every level, people are playing d5 and then c6, just blocking these diagonals. They're not getting tempted by taking this pawn. They're not playing bishop takes g4 and allowing whatever crazy stuff is going on in this diagonal. They're just playing d5 and c6 and shutting this down. And apparently this is extremely effective. This is extremely effective to the point where white is getting nothing out of this position seemingly no matter what he tries. And it looks like at least two things have been tried here. People have tried pawn to c4 to break up this diagonal and it looks menacing but people again they don't want anything weird to happen with captures. So most people are just taking it and doing just fine. 
And then after even say knight a3, nobody's getting greedy, nobody's weakening their light squares. They just finish their development. People are just playing g6, bishop g7, finishing their development, planning their knight on d5. Notice we just keep the bishop on c8, and, and we keep this pawn on c6, and we keep this diagonal blockaded, and nothing weird is happening. And apparently people are finding this, even people that aren't familiar with the opening or didn't put any time into studying the opening, they're finding these moves no problem. And so an example would be like queen g3, bishop e6, a3, knight d7. And as you can see, black has completely completed his development and white is still completely undeveloped. This position is just a spectacularly good position for black and black is doing extremely well from here. The other way that people have been trying this is after they play pawn to c6, they're just defending their pawn with h3. And black can even just get away with taking the center here. He can play e5, d4, e4, and black has an advantage here. White has weakened his king side seemingly for no reason, and black has created a pawn structure where he actually wants to eventually start opening lines and breaking up the position on the king side, so white's moves are actually pretty helpful for that. So that's the worst first move in chess, apparently, from a statistical perspective, and I would dare say from a strategic perspective. I don't know if d5 and c6 is the absolute theoretical best way to face the grobs with g4 and bishop g2, but from a practical level, I would say it's definitely the best way to face the grobs because it shuts down any kind of preparation that your opponent may have. Okay, so that's my advice. If you face the grob, play d5 and c6, but also just if you wanted to know what the worst first move in chess was, it is the grob, it is g4. You can tell your friend that plays the grob as his full-time opening that statistically, this is actually the worst first move in chess. Okay, so anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new about chess. And if you like videos and if you like content like this, please go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, hit subscribe.